What's up, guys? It's uh, April 15th, and we're going to look at another example of uh, using sprites with the images that come with them in your game. So we're not completely transforming over to using the sprite function for everything. I still have in my example, I'm going to show you a lot of my original functions that could be simplified uh, by, you know, folding them into stuff that's built in, but last time I showed the breakout game. If you remember, we had our breakout game, and I just like googled a picture of a brick and kind of cropped it in the right way, and then I um, pasted it in there, but I don't, I don't want to just like, you know, uh, steal images from people. We should have a little more creativity, and there will be times when you can make yours, or you can do some cool stuff, so uh, last period, I had a plan period. I was sitting here and I did something that ended up being kind of fun. So you know in Space Invaders, the enemies are like these weird little bug things. You know, like uh, enemy Space Invaders. They look like uh, they look like this. If you ever watch Aqua Teen Hunger Force, they have characters that look like that that show up a couple of times. So I took I want to do like a hand-drawn one. I don't know why. I took a little post-it note and I drew this guy. I know it's not perfect, but I thought it was cute. So I drew this guy on a post-it note. And then I wanted to do the player as well, but unfortunately the player in Space Invaders sucks. It's like that. It looks like a cake or something. I think in Space Invaders, the original, you're not even playing a ship. The idea is that like you're a you know, defense turret on Earth or something. But anyway, that sucks. However, this guy, this type of thing, is really the ship from Galaga. So I drew one of those. Again, garbage um, art skills, but I drew. I took a little post-it note and I drew this. Little ship, little Galaga-esque ship. And then I took a picture and I did two filters. One is the mono filter to make it black and white. And then one was the negative filter to switch the black and white. So that this is now white on a black background. And so what I ended up doing was this. And I put these guys, I'm not saying this is good, I'm not saying this is beautiful, but I thought it was kind of cute. Now I put them in my Space Invaders game. And now I got, uh oh, it's running slow. Because I've got a million tabs and, yeah, okay. So I got the enemies that look like the little bug guys. And then I've got my ship is now my little ship made of straight lines. There's one issue, which is that it doesn't disappear when you die like it's supposed to. We'll get to that in a minute. But you see, it looks all right, you know? Kind of cute. We don't have to do a black and white. I don't know why I like the black and white. You can use whatever colors you want, and your thing can be, you know, sky blue with green stuff and red fire and whoever knows what you like. But I thought the black and white would be kind of uh, stylish. So how did I do that? I took an image file and I went to Replit Upload, okay? I went to Upload File just right here, and I up, the last one was a PNG, this one's a JPEG, it can probably be various types, we'll figure it out. The harder part though is when you get to um, transparency, if you want to have like a thing with a transparent background that uh, doesn't show up, which That'll be when it gets more uh, specific about the types and everything. But for this, we, uh, we're starting with the easy stuff. So how did I put those into the uh, classes? Is you go, uh, first you put them in the your top classes, you know, your top level ones, not the subclasses. You put pygame.sprite.capital sprite in the... Uh, parentheses after it to show that it inherits the sprite characteristics. And then you don't have to do that in the subclasses because like this guy is a subclass of ship, but that inherits down the line. So it inherits the grandparents without you having to say that. You just tell it to parents and it gets everything from before. Um, then you give it a image and a rect. Okay, image, you go pygame.image.load and you say the thing. And then rect is a rectangle that it just draws around the dimensions. 
of the image. Okay, you don't have to use a rec. Somebody, somebody asked, you could use a circle. Yeah, you can use a circle. Um, you can use lots of different things. They just, uh, you know, default to a rectangle as a, you know, easy thing. And this game, we were already using rectangles for my uh, hitboxes around the enemies. You know, I've still got hitboxes in the classes. Those are already rectangles, so I might as well just stick with it for now. And then you have to tell it where that image goes. If you don't tell it where, it's just going to put it in the top left corner of the screen. But if you tell it, hey, I'm going to tell you where the center is or where the top left is or something, depending on how you draw it. If you're drawing a circle, then you probably have your center as your main point that you work with is your X and Y. Um, if you're doing a rectangle, you usually start at the top left. Um, you can put whatever. They have a great um, system of naming the different points that totally makes sense. If you say top left or bottom middle or center or whatever, it'll do what you want. It'll basically uh, be just English words. And then you have to switch to using groups. So instead of my lists, I put pygame.sprite.group. I actually could have just kept the word list. I could have called this enemy list and then used the same thing throughout all the code. But um, I ended up just doing the old uh, control F find and replace thing. And I switched enemy list to enemy group and just threw out all the code to change those. And then in the loop, you use those functions instead of the ones we made. So it automatically has a clear function. It has a draw in the sprite group built-in stuff that we're inheriting and we're going to use that instead of the show and hide that we made to do the shapes. This is all the same as I showed you last time. It's all the same as we had in that video from the other guy on YouTube doing the target game. I just want you guys to see multiple examples. Okay, you can use uh, whatever image you want. And really, that's easy to switch. Like if I make a better ship image, I can just change the files or change the path and then that'll automatically, you know, filter through. Everything else is fine. So don't worry too much about the image. If you want to draw a little stupid thing on a post-it note and then put it through some filters, you can. And then you get you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, pleased with myself after doing this in like the 10 minutes before you got here. Um, I thought it was pretty good. So if you have something like that, wonderful. If you Google an image, if you make an image, obviously there are like actual um, programs to make sprites. You tell it, okay, this is going to be uh, 40 by 40 pixels, and it gives you a grid, and you boop, 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 dot each one. Um, that works uh, better than anything, of course. It just takes a little bit of skill. So think about that. I will post this code. But again, this code isn't good. I need to go through and change a lot to make it work. For example, I mentioned one thing, which is that when the player gets hit, um, in my original version, you would go away. Like it would... It's being very slow and laggy. That's not because of the code. It's just because I have a zillion tabs open and I'm recording and I'm doing everything at the same time. But let's say you get hit and you die. And right now I'm on screen, which I probably shouldn't be, you know, because right now I can't move. I can't do anything. I have to hit enter. So uh, maybe we could make our guy go away when you're dead. Or even like a lot of games would show you know, the dead version. It's like, uh, you know, when you're Sonic, you like turn upside down and fall off the screen or, um, or whatever. It could be like your guy turns into a frowny face or something. But let's say, just to give an example, let's make our guy disappear because that's what did happen. And that code is still there. The player or the ship class, let's look at that before we get into the player. The ship class has a die function. And when the bullet touches it, it says, hey, you run your die function. 
and it sets the on screen variable to false. Uh, we might stop using that. We might uh, get rid of it because we probably don't need it. And then it runs the hide function. But the hide function is based on this rectangle stuff that we're not really using anymore. So I'm going to change this to. Um, I was going to say, I was going to change something, but then it would change the, the both of them because this is affecting enemy and uh, player. So let's make a copy. Again, this is real quick and ugly. I just made this before you got in here. But let's put a copy in the player class. And let's make it do uh, self.kill. Kill is not a function I wrote. It's a thing that's built into the sprites. And all it does is remove it from the group. And that means that it won't get drawn. It won't do all the stuff which is what we want, except we have to put it back. Whenever we hit enter to restart and retry and get a continue, uh, we have to put it back on the, on the group. So let's do that real quick. For the retry, um, uh, player group dot add. Sorry. That'll probably work. It's giving me a red underline, but that's usually because uh, if you ever get a red underline that doesn't make sense, where you're like, I know I typed it, it's probably because it's taking a second to, you know, contact back and forth with the replit server and like auto save and reconcile what you typed and what they typed and then they test it and blah, blah, blah. So let's hit run. I bet that'll work. You never know. Uh, let's, let's shoot them just to make sure that still works. Again, it's not really supposed to be this slow. Uh, I got them. Now let's let them shoot us. Let's get hit. And then we go away. And then I press enter. Uh-oh. It took a second. But I'm back and I'm shooting. So we got to figure out. I don't think it's my code that's slowing it down. I think it's just the connection as you could see with the even the text took a second to uh, save and everything but uh, that's another example we got uh, last time I showed the breakout before that you got the target game from the YouTube video and then now we have one uh, with some silly little hand-drawn guys so lots of variety next time we'll show another example and give you guys uh, different angles on what the possibilities are. Thanks.